when you first started getting rid of these bad habits for the sake of Muay Thai, like how how quickly did you feel like the positive impact after you mm-hmm. decided to finally shift your habits? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, it was it was pretty quick. And, and the funny thing, which we can kind of get into a little bit more, but I I almost had a bit of a yo-yo effect at the beginning where I would train really hard, um, see the benefits. And then when the fight was done, I'd kind of go and, and relapse, you know, and get back into the party. And it, it was almost a justification of, oh, I worked so hard. Now that I'm done the fight, I can, you know, go for, have fun for a week or two. Right. right. And then, and then I would start the fighting process again. So that's kind of how I did it at the beginning. But, you know, eventually you, you start to see that even if you're, you know, using it in pockets like that, it's still going to affect your health, not only uh, physical health, but mental health as well. Mm-hmm. And what I found, especially, which we can talk about a little bit is just the community aspect of being around people that are passionate about fitness and about health and wellness. And, you know, you're starting to shape a new identity as you're hanging out with these types of people. And when you hang out with your uh, other group of friends, you're starting to see the patterns, patterns are kind of coming to light. It's like, oh, this group kind of likes to drink and do the things that aren't serving me very well. And this group likes to do things that are serving me very well. So I'm going to start to migrate to the other group, you know? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, how did you start that migration? Was that tough? Like, cause I'm assuming your friends who you picked up the bad habits with you, you had been friends with for a while. Mm -hmm. Right. So how, how were you able to kind of make that transition? Was it tough? Yeah, absolutely. And what's crazy about that is that actually didn't happen as far as like a full transition until a lot later on. And we can talk about that. Um, But really that yo-yo effect that I had kind of lasted my entire fight career. So although I was super dedicated for those long stints of time, especially if I had tournaments or a couple of fights after another, I'd have those very long uh, drawn out time of, of wellness and health and fitness but then I'd always go back to drinking. So it actually wasn't until later on when I wanted to start a fitness company that my full transition kind of took place. And to answer your question, it's one of the hardest things in the world um, to, to do that, to uh, stop hanging out with people that, and I, you know, the one thing I want to reiterate, it's not like they're bad people, you know, right. these are good friends. Of mine. I'm, st- I'm still friends with them today, but if they're going to the bar every weekend, if they're, you know, that's what they want to do for fun. That's great for them. But for me, it wasn't serving me. And I wanted to become a peak athlete and start, you know, really treating my body well. So that transition is super painful. And you'll have some friends that will understand and support you and give you positive messages, which is awesome. And you'll have other friends that don't understand and get really hurt that you're not hanging out with them. Right. And I think that transition is a uh, really hard to do, but it takes courage. And at the end of the day, it's for your better health and wellness. So not only physical, but mental as well. You want to be around people that are supporting you and have the same vision and like mind as you. So that when you're doing these things, whether it's health, business, whatever, you're around people that are supporting you and you can go hang out with them and talk about the future, talk about what's coming next, as opposed to who got drunk last weekend. So it is a very uh, hard transition, but anyone that's going through that right now, I would say just stick with it. It's worth it in the end. And I'll never forget just like a fun little story. It seems so in- insignificant now, but I had a, a group chat with a bunch of these uh, friends that I would I'd hang out with. And just that act of leaving that chat was actually took a lot of courage for me because it was like, what are they going to think? I don't want to be in this chat. That's just constantly talking about going, what's happening the next weekend, who's going out where, and I decided to leave that chat as a group that we'd had for over like three years, four years. And that simple act, which sounds so insignificant, was a big deal for me because kind of it was a statement that, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be talking about these things with you guys anymore. And I, I left that chat. So anyways, I think the point is for anyone that's going through this, you just have to stick with your guns and try and find people that you can surround yourself with that are going to motivate you and encourage you and really just have your best interest in mind you know right yeah 100 percent. that little exit from the group chat honestly is terrifying because when you mm-hmm. exit it shows that notification to everyone and so it's not like you yeah. can just sneakily leave and people are like oh where'd he go <laughs> it's it's right there it's like yeah he ditched you guys everyone sees yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah no i i completely relate because i the group of friends i have now are incredible and mm-hmm. i i in the same respect as you like 
we talk about the future and we talk about how each of us are mm -hmm. growing individually, but also as a group. And I think that was, that was one of my main priorities in friends is that, you know, I, I want friends that I can grow with. It's kind of like a relationship in that regard where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I want to grow with you. And so having friends like that now throughout high school, you're, you're kind of weeding out the ones that are kind of stuck there, not in, not in a bad way per se, but, or their values are completely different than yours. And it's mm -hmm. tough because mm -hmm. you grew up with these people, but I mean, you can still be distant friends or acquaintances. You don't have to completely mm -hmm. cut them out. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, you have to do what's right for you. And, and I totally agree with you, especially as you get older. Because when right. I made this transition, I was, you know, 25, 26 years old. So at that point, your identity is kind of solidified. You're in a group that all hangs out together. So it's not like you can leave and go off to university and just kind of subtly change change paths and start hanging out with new people, right? right. So I, I, I think for whether you're young or old, either way, it's going to be super challenging. But for me, it was like I was already in this group and had been for so many years that it was such a blow to just up and leave. So it caught a lot of people off guard, but I think it's, it's so necessary. And to your point, when you're around people that support you, there's no greater feeling mm. than having a group that you know when you have a win in business or in fitness or whatever, you can shoot a message out to them. And you'll get replies just being like, hey, great job. You know, you got this. We got your back. Like, there's nothing better than that. And to me, you like from my personal experience, I would never feel comfortable sending a, a win kind of text to that old group of friends. Like, hey, I just hit this new goal. They'd be like, so? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think, I think it, that's one of the most powerful things is um, getting around people that will support you. Mm -hmm.